Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organization of the, of the conference for inviting me. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you and, and share our experiences with real time and, and Kafka. Uh, I'm Farhan Ghali. Uh, I work at Life Will Connect, and, and I hope I might inspire you today. Uh, I want to give you a bit of context. Uh, what is a real estate listing, which the title is Real Time Real Estate Listings with Apache Kafka? What's a real estate listing? Well, it's a piece of private property that is pay, put either for sale or for rent. And, well, long time ago, you could see that on newspapers, but right now, everything is like digitalized and you find it on, on straight away on your mile, mobile phone. Uh, well, Life Will Connect, we are in this business. We are a group of companies that at some point we mix together uh, with a common mission, which is help people find a home. Um, how we help people? Well, through, through our portals. Well, we got plenty of portals where people can go there, compare the, uh, the properties that are listed there, and well, connect with the, with the people that are selling them. Uh, we got plenty of sites and lots of people to help uh, because there's a big audience uh, of people that reach our, our websites. Okay, I'm gonna tell you uh, this journey to, to this real-time leasing system that we built um, during the last two and a half years. Um, yeah, to connect these persons with the homes, uh, with these home seekers with the listings, um, what they should do actually is connect them with their owners. Um, and well, since we got plenty of like portals and brands, like you would think like, okay, this, this person publishes the, your listing everywhere, no? Well, <laughs> that seems like, a hard work, manual work. So what we actually did is create, we created a, a unified back office so a professional can publish their listing just in a single place. Um, and this listing gets automatically propagated to all the sites. Yeah, that sounds nice, but uh, since I told you it's, it's a, a big bunch of company that joined together, that like lots of lines of code, lots of sites, lots of team working on it, and legacy code, legacy systems, and these systems, they take between like four and 24 hours, uh, if you're optimistic. So that's a thing a real estate professional they cannot accept. I mean, they want to publish the property and check it at, at the end if they did some mistake or correct some style thing, you know, and we want to provide the best experience. So that's why we created this, um, real-time listing system. Internally, we call it Redis, but that's another story. Um, and the goals of this, this system is, yeah, to bring this real-time data propagation, to strangle these legacy systems, and reduce the complexity of the whole system. Um, so how, how it yeah, works and in a like, super simple diagram, it's like, yeah, the, this person publishes the, the listing, the listing gets propagated somewhere, uh, which is like, <laughs> I was uh, like specifying this, this system with this like gear. Um, and then instead of the listing get propagated to all the sites, what are the sites that are getting the listings from this centralized place? Yeah. So that's um, the thing. That's uh, actually the, like the big uh, picture of how we did it, what we did it. And now I'm going to tell you how we uh, did it. Um, I'm going to tell you in three steps how we propagate the data, how we process the listings, and how we serve them. Um, I don't have the timer running, well, no worries. Um, okay, so uh, how we propagate the data, which is like this part of the di diagram. Well, um, we used um, two uh, concepts, uh, which is domain events and event logs. Uh, a domain event uh, is something that happened in a specific domain that we want others to be aware of. And an event log, it's uh, an append-only sequence of events, and it's not a queue. Uh, a queue, like, when uh, it, it gets consumed, an event log, it's, like, persistent, and you can read the log again and again if you want. I mean, if you can't store it, yeah. Um, 
So um, how we did it is, well, the person, the professional, Pavel does the things on the back office, and the things get locked into this event log uh, as domain events. So the listings are not written to this log. What they are written what is the what happens with this listing. Like a listing has been published, a listing has been modified, hidden, wherever. And this listing system, what it does, it reads these events to do whatever it is necessary. The thing of uh, being an event log and not a queue system that gets like expiring the, expired the messages is that somewhere else, some something else, like for instance analytics, could read this event and do whatever they think is necessary. So how we, we implemented the, the system? Uh, well, with uh, two, te two main technologies, is uh, Apache Kafka and Apache Abro. I'm gonna do like a big glimpse on the two technologies just in case we, you never use it, and then I'm gonna s tell you how we actually uh, are using these technologies. So Apache Abro, it's uh, an efficient engine to serialize data. Um, there's libraries in multiple languages, so you can use it uh, either from the JVM, PHP, Golang, uh, and a bunch of more. And differing from JSON, which uh, there's no schema, I mean, you can write whatever you want in a string and, and that's the data. Uh, in Abro, you, you need uh, schemas to write and, re and read data. How is that? So imagine you got a uh, datum, I don't know if you can read it, yeah. Um, so imagine you got a, a data, well, with the data structure, my data, it has a, an ID, which is a string, and a price, which is a long, uh, no, not a long, double, sorry. Um, what you would do in Abro is uh, you, you would define a, a schema, which is actually a JSON, and at this JSON you will define what is the data structure that you want to represent and serialize. With this, um, with this JSON and the library that it's used to uh, encode the data, what you would uh, get is a binary that if you can see here, I mean, it's not like JSON that you can identify what is everything. It's, it's something that it, unless you have something, you cannot see what, what's the UID and what's the number. So what you need to deserialize the data is the schema back again. Okay. Um, how we implemented this, uh, this, uh, these events with, with Abro? Well, we actually defined some, uh, some, some schemas with the domain events that are on our domain for, for the back office, like listing has been published, modified, boosted, and a bunch more. That's our just, just examples. And well, what's interesting for us is like we put four mandatory fields. One is an event ID, which is a unique ID, which for us it's interesting for like uh, uniquely identifying the events. Uh, some field which we call produced by, which is who produced the data. Uh, well, just in case we want to track the information in the future when, when it becomes legacy, right? And, and then uh, some occur, uh, occurred on, which is when the event got uh, produced. And the most important one, which is the ID, which it's not the event ID, it's not a unique ID, but it's the domain ID on the event. So if this event represents listings, it's the ID of the listing. So a published and unmodified from a same listing would get the same ID. Yeah. The second technology we're using is Apache Kafka. It's implementing a lock, but it's not a common lock, like the a file. It's a distributed lock. Um, it gets the distribution through a, a, a cluster of broker nodes uh, that lie on somewhere. Could be a cloud or wherever you want. Um, it's fault tolerant because it uses something called partitions and replicas. I will tell a bit more about that. And it enables, well, uh, multiple producers of data, multiple consumers of data, and it enables this real-time consumption of data. Uh, in, in a glimpse, uh, how, how, how Kafka works is that you define something that are called topics. Uh, these topics are splitted by something called partitions. I hope you can read it, yeah. 
um, and these partitions uh, are the ones that store the data. So the data gets stored on, this, on these partitions. Then on the physical, uh, what you get is uh, a cluster of broker nodes. And these broker nodes distribute the partitions through all the cluster. Uh, and what they do is, uh, well, replicate the partitions at least once. So you got the partitions not just one time, but uh, multiple times. Uh, two at least, I think the, the ideal would be three. Um, but well, the thing is that these partitions replicated, uh, it controls that a replica and a partition doesn't fall in the same node. So if you lose a broker node, you won't lose any data because you got a replica. How we implemented it? Well, we created uh, a topic which is called, yeah, listing event, uh, which are the events on the domain of listings. And uh, whenever an event gets uh, published, modified, uh, or whatever, it will get written to this, to this uh, uh, topic. Um, the thing, on, and, and that's pretty important for us, is that uh, these events are split through repartitions with the domain ID that we have. So events with a single domain ID, they will fall into the same partition. That's super important for us because imagine that you would have like uh, events uh, on, on the same listing on one partition than the other. Kafka doesn't um, respect the order when you're reading the data on multiple partitions. They can, he, they, uh, Kafka, it ensures you that if you read data in a single partition, it would maintain the order where the, the data is written. So that's for us, it's very really important, this, the order of these events, because actually the order matters. Uh, but then how Apache Kafka and, and Apache Abro uh, uh, mix together, or how they work together? Uh, well, um, they work together through sending uh, Abro binary records to these Kafka topics and partitions. And uh, every single record that you're sending to Kafka, um, well, since, since there's, there's some schema in it, at the schema, you, doesn't, you don't write it to the Kafka directly, but you write it somewhere else, uh, which is called schema registry. This schema registry, the good thing is that it will allow us uh, to do some control to schema evolution that I will be talking a bit more about uh, later. Um, okay, so that would be <laughs> yeah, a super simple schema on, on how we would, would they work together. You would got first a Kafka cluster, and a schema registry, which are something that they lie in a different different pieces of infrastructure, like could be you know, like well you got so the schema registry doesn't lie inside the Kafka cluster. That's pretty pretty important. At first, I, I thought it was at the same place, but it's not. Um, so when you produce, uh, well you got a producer and, and data to to get inside the Kafka. What what like in for instance here like four datums, two data made and two day to B. Um, what you would do is first serialize the information in, in, in Abro um, and put the record to, through Kafka. So the binary, you will put it to Kafka. And the schema, uh, you'll store it to the schema registry. And this schema registry will have like a primary key or an idea of schema. And this primary key of the schema, you will store it through Kafka as a record. Then if you want to, re, uh, to write another record on, 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 on the day to May, you will need to re-register re the, the schema again because it's already on the cache of the consumer, producer, sorry. And then the same thing if you want to write um, day to B. What if you want to consume the data? Well, you get the data and what you'll find is binary. There's no way to decipher that unless you got something, which is a schema. But the good luck is that we got the ID written. We can get the, read the, the ID from the schema registry and then deserialize the data. Um, well, the same thing with, with another record that contains the same schema, but you don't need to re-get the schema. And uh, 
well, uh, with the second datum, you do the same procedure. What if you got a datum uh, with, uh, which is the data structure A, but it's an evolution. So imagine that you adding a field. Um, so this is not a new schema. Actually, it's a schema that you already had before, but it's, it's a modification of this schema. And the schema registry knows about it. Schema registry knows that this schema that you're trying to register, it's an evolution, so it's a new version of the schema. And this schema registry that you can configure with certain rules, that could be like you accept forward compatible evolutions or backward compatible evolutions, or both of them. Uh, um, it will um, either allow you or deny you to register the schema if you comply with, uh, with, um, with this uh, compatibility um, um, like contract. Um, well, if we succeed, we just register it as a new ID, but internally, if schema registry will know that it's, um, it's a schema from, from the a new version of the schema, and then the, the consumer would be able to consume it without problems. So that's uh, how uh, we propagated the, the data on, on, on this event lock through the real-time listing systems. Next. How we process these, uh, these listings? Uh, well, as you see here, what we got are not um, listings, are events on listings, like domain events. But here, what we want to serve are listings. So we, somehow, we need to reconstruct the information no? uh, to provide them to the, to the portals. Um, so how, how we how we do these transformations with Apache Kafka Streams. Apache Kafka Streams is a, a piece of technology which is bundled with, with Apache Kafka. Um, it's not Kafka, so it's not, it's not the, Apache, the Kafka cluster. It's a, a library that, well, I would say like uh, something that you would run uh, apart from Kafka in your, in your own cluster that you will build up from instances. It doesn't run in Kafka. Uh, but it provides you a framework uh, to do transformations to this data stored in Kafka. So wh what you will see that we will get like a bunch of code uh, just in the next slide. Um, it's an easy to use, well, pretty easy to use, I would say. Uh, functional, ki kind of functional API, sorry for the functional like uh, <laughs> funds, uh, that runs on this JVM. So that's a JVM code that gets compiled, it gets bundled and deployed to um, somewhere and, and then it runs. It runs uh, at infinitum, so it's a program that continually gets running and process information. Um, the good thing on Kafka Streams is that it ensures you this exactly once delivery of data. Uh, and exactly once it means that data is not lost, but it's not duplicated either. So uh, when you read a record, uh, this record will only do the whole process of the transformation just once, which is a pretty um, rare probably, but, but uh, when you need it, it's, it's really important. Um, then it's um, the, the, the system itself, this, the framework itself is distributed, fault tolerance, and for us it's super important, this, this part, that it enables uh, this stateless and stateful processing of information. I'm going to tell you more about, uh, well, uh, with a, a, like dummy code examples, actually, uh, but this uh, stateless and stateless processing, processing of information. So, that would be an example, I hope you can read it too, uh, of, um, of a, 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 um, a stateless Kafka Streams application. Uh, what you have is a bunch of li lines of code of, uh, of boilerplate just to set up the Kafka Streams and well, make it run. Probably it's not that correct, but I haven't checked, I haven't compiled it, but I just wanted to, to show it as an, as an example. And then what you, will, what you would do is use the Kafka Streams API to uh, get 
uh, an object uh, from a topic. So you, you actually like get a, an object called a case stream from a, from a topic on Kafka. And this case stream, uh, it's actually the logical, like, uh, the logical um, uh, concept, well, concept, no, logical object that it allows you to do transformations to these Kafka topics. For instance, that's a simple example. It's just a dot map. Uh, would you apply a function to this case stream, and you get a case stream with the modifications of, uh, of, the, of the objects. Um, and then you, it allows you to get this case stream that you got modified and store it back again to Kafka. So the, what it will do is it will take uh, record by record, it will apply the transformation, and it will write it to another, to another Kafka topic. That's pretty simple. Uh, well, I would say that the most complex thing that is something that I'm not showing here, <laughs> and probably it will will get for another presentation, would be how you get this key to and value and well key and value how you write it. There are some things in in Kafka streams that are called serializers and the serializers that are the ones that allows you to get from like actual records on Kafka to objects on on your JVM. That is the probably the thing that could be more more complex about it. Uh, but that, um, that, that would be another, another talk. And then um, the stateful Kafka Streams applications, uh, what you do is uh, instead of just transforming uh, the, the records one by one, well, actually you're transforming the records one by one, but uh, it provides you an API where you could, let me see if I, I can explain it myself, <laughs> but what you could do is uh, do some things. I would do like the, the, the similarity with uh, or connected with the fault on, on, on functional programming. What you could, what you do doing is uh, um, mixing um, uh, two data together uh, on a single function. Uh, so uh, Kafka Streams it provides you the reduce and the aggregate, which it allows you to get. Um, So it <laughs> let me see if I can explain me explain it this this way. So <laughs> yeah, sorry. So here on group by key, what you do is you uh, group the stream by the key because uh, Kafka is key value, and all the um, all the uh, events or the records that share the same ID, it will get to this aggregation. The first one that you would get, uh, it will compute this initial value. Right. So. If we get um, the first listing, I would say um, on our on our use case, if we get the first listing with ID one, what you need to calculate uh, is an initial value, which it would be, for instance, a listing, a void listing, and then mix it. No, so we will get this function. We would, we would mix the um, the the initial value with the event real estate has been published, for instance. No, so. And this um, result, the result of this aggregation, it will get stored somewhere, which is a memory store. And this object will be used for the next record that's sharing the same key. So the, same, the next record sharing the uh, listing with ID1, it will get the last, uh, the last um, um, object with the same key and mix it together with the same function. Uh, this memory store, um, well, it's something that if it's in memory, if you lose the application, you lose the, uh, the memory, so, so you lose the state. How Kafka Streams maintains the state is uh, it's through a Kafka topic. So it, this memory store, it gets backed up uh, through another Kafka topic. So when you run the application, it will read the store, it will populate the cache or the memory, and then uh, we'll continue running. Yeah, and you write another topic. So that's it. That would be a stateful Kafka stream application. How we implemented it on our use case, which I've I more or less explained myself uh, before. So we got this uh, listing has been published. With the listing has been published, what we get is a listing. And this listing gets written on, on the memory store. And when we get another modifica modifications on the same listing, 
it we will do an aggregation with the listing that it's on, on the memory store, aggregated with the new event. So somehow we're, what we're doing is yeah, reconstructing this, this state. And if you see, which is uh, at first, when, when I saw it, for me it was a bit weird, but what we are doing here is writing another record, which is the, we're not modifying the last record of, of, the, of the listing, we're reading, writing another record of the listing with a new modification. So it's an, like a new version. So what you'll have here is, if you read these topic listings, what you'll get is uh, the snapshots of the listings and how they are changing over the time. And that's how we implemented these uh, transformations of, of listings. Um, then, how we serve these listings. Um, yeah, so we got these listings, but they are in Kafka. They are not some, some Kafka you cannot call, uh, call it like an API. And these sites need to get this information. Well, we used another piece of technology in the Apache Kafka stack, uh, which is called Apache Kafka Connect. Um, Apache Kafka Connect is it's a software that it's made to connect Kafka data to external systems. So. Kafka streams would be um, uh, something like transforming data inside of, of Kafka. And Kafka Connect, it's for getting data and I would say produce side effects on this functional programming thing, terminology. Um, uh, so yeah, you can move data uh, from, from outside of Kafka to in Kafka with, with some things that are, are called source connectors and move data, data out with sync connectors. And the good thing is that, well, there's a big community and companies providing connectors, uh, and they are pluggable with this, with this piece of software. This, again, is not a software that it's inside Kafka. Kafka the Kafka cluster is the, what I told you before. The Kafka Connect is a new set of cluster of machines where the Kafka Connect will run, and it will m interact with the Kafka cluster. Um, so it looks some, more or less something like that. So you got, I don't know, in this case it's a connect, uh, an example of a dummy example of connector that you get data from MySQL to, to, to a Kafka topic, would be a source connector. You configure that with JSON, so somehow <laughs> you get to read a lot of the documentation on the connectors because, well, you don't know what will happen underneath. Uh, that I, got, I didn't tell you, but you can code your own connectors and deploy it if you if you would like. Um, and then this would be an example of a sync connector, which well you get data from Kafka and you store it on an external system. Uh, this example would be an Elasticsearch sync connector. How we how we implemented that? Uh, well, we got the the our topic with the snapshot on the last date of listings, and what we did is, well, set up some Elasticsearch uh, somewhere and connect these two pieces with a, an Elasticsearch sync connector. So whenever a new listing goes on the system, uh, this listing will get stored onto the Elasticsearch. When the new version of the listing gets on, on, on the Kafka uh, topic, you won't write another record, but you would modify the record that you are already having on, on Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch doesn't have like the whole full history of, of listings, but what, what we'll have is like the last state on each of the listings. And well, the same thing with all the events that we could have. So you can see here that there are some like a topic with a bunch of a bunch of uh, records, but in the Elasticsearch, there's just three because there's just three listings. And then we implemented uh, some uh, API. Well, internally, what would be <laughs> also another <laughs> another talk? We implemented it with Kotlin, GraphQL, and yeah, since we're interacting with lots of uh, lots of portals, <laughs> it's uh, would be like it's like a public API, which it scares us a bit, some, everything that we do. Uh, yeah, 
so yeah, that's why we 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 got this the the um, the portals to get the listings information. But yeah, there's some portals that are not and so or not not all the the the, the portals are in the same region. We are we are a global company. What we have portals in in America, in Europe, and and in Asia, specifically Southeast Asia. Uh, so what we did is create connectors uh, for each of these regions. Uh, so you'd get it's like replicas of Elasticsearch uh, to every region that we want to to one data to to be served. So somehow what what we got is that the data that we processed with Apache Kafka, somehow it became the source of truth of listings. So mm, we replicate this information, whatever it needs. Uh, yeah, and, and, and when it changes the source of truth, it will get propagated to all the regions. Yeah, I've been pretty fast, I think. But yeah, that's um, how like the, re the full picture of the real estate system that we that we implemented. Um, there's some things that still <laughs> we need to get need to get evolving. So if somebody here <laughs> knows more things on that, <laughs> let's let's have a talk after um, or a coffee. Um, so we need to improve the observability, uh, either the from the Kafka streams, the Kafka Connect, and the Kafka cluster. We got obviously we wouldn't r have been running anything on production without observability, but not we are not the that comfortable, so we we need to better work on, on that. Um, there is something that probably doesn't connect with what I have been talking, but this is something that uh, we are not just, well, we did it for listings, but we've seen the potential to use it on other divisions, on other domains, right? Um, and since we are doing, doing Kafka streams, uh, Kafka streams they create these uh, topics that store store the the internal state of the ma of the cache or, or the ca cache another stateful processing that I told. So there's somehow there's some topics that are contain public information and some topics that contain information that is internal to Kafka streams. So somehow we need that these public topics like these topics with public information get public, so people can use this information. Um, but the private topics should remain private because if you touch it or you delete it, you um, make your application crash. We we would like to have a yeah proper data catalog or, or well at least like these Avro schemas that we we define it uh, to be somewhere where people can see what is everything you know. Um, we got some things, but yeah, we're not really comfortable with any anyway. And then the, what they said that we got the potential of uh, these things to be used on other divisions. Um, but well, actually we got, at least in Lifeful Connect or some parts of Lifeful Connect, we got some really bad experiences on, on multi-tenal clusters, specifically Hadoop clusters, which everyone is <laughs> mingling there. And we just want about Void to, to have that to happen again. Uh, so yeah. We're still like designing, or at least thinking or iterating how how we we need to do that. So we got some experience that would be nice too. Um, yeah, and and then that's an also a disclaimer. What I showed you today that's like a big picture uh, of of something a specific problem, which is the propagation of these listings, but underneath. It unlocked uh, potential of, of real-time data processing. So, for instance, another thing that we're doing is uh, we also ingesting what is happening on, on each listing, not just what happens in the, on the back office, but it, what is happening on the sites. And depending on what's it's happening on the sites, um, the listing gets modified somehow. So, like depending on the popularity, you could uh, like promote them uh, more or less depending on. Some several like product uh, rules that 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 would be yeah, another talk, um, but yeah, that it allowed us to do these kind of things in real time. And yeah, everything to keep following our mission to to help people find a home. And 
if you want to know more, we got a stand. Uh, um, we can see you there if you want to have a chat. Um, that's our social media accounts. And that would be for my talk. Thank you. Some questions? Mike. It's working? Yeah. Uh, I, um, I'm wondering if the information on Elasticsearch and the one that have Kafka in memory is kind of, is the wall thing that is in Elasticsearch also in this Kafka memory? So at the end, if it's everything aggregated there, mm -hmm. I, it looks like all the data is, for me, it's not a problem that it's replicated, but it looks like it's replicated there also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, it somehow is duplicated, but in Elasticsearch, it's not the same data because, I mean, if you use Elasticsearch for to do full text search or for to do facets or whatever, you need to prepare the data in certain ways yeah. that are different of what you would store on a source of truth. No, mm -hmm. I mean that would be a <laughs> that would be a problem to have the source of truth with the structure that you need on Elasticsearch. Yeah, 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 so what? That's actually a copy, yeah, okay. but uh, prepared for Elasticsearch. We actually don't have just Elasticsearch, but I mean, we provide Elasticsearch for uh, a listing results. So you, when you're on a web web page and you and you see all the listings, that's an Elasticsearch query. But if you go to a listing directly, that's on a DynamoDB. So we do the same thing on DynamoDB, but we couldn't fit okay. my presentation and provide the context. But so what what we do is like pre we prepare the information for each use case, and that's a copy. Yeah, okay. And another thing, if the registry of the schemas is self-made or you use some product on there, I don't get that. We use, uh, right now, the Confluence Schema Registry. We are on Amazon Web Services and we use MSK. MSK, it, it gives you, uh, it gives you a, a schema registry that it works on Glue. Uh, but we are using the Confluence Schema Registry for one reason, uh, that it's as you have seen, uh, we got a topic with multiple schemas. So a topic that contains schemas of different data structures. That is something that uh, other schemas didn't provide. We wanted to use the native uh, Amazon Web Services, but Amazon Web Services didn't provide, so we are using um, the Confluence Schema Registry for that. And it is something that we deployed ourselves. So. Um, we uh, actually this confluence schema is open source. You like compile it in a Docker image and and you upload it to your Kubernetes cluster, and it works. The the persistence layer on the on the schema registry, it's on Kafka itself, so um, you don't need to like to worry to lose data because it it persists in the same cluster that is uh, it's just working. So if you set up this schema registry, what you'll look on your Kafka is I think it's a topic called underscore schemas or underscore whatever. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. More questions? I don't know if there's some on the application, but if there are not, I would say that could be coffee time. Let's see. There's no, there's no? Okay. Well, thank you very much.